afternoon theater. We present Dulcie Gray and Michael Dennison in Blithe Spirit by Noel Coward, adapted for broadcasting by Norman Wright. Blithe Spirit. Edith? Yes, sir. Put the drinks on the center table. Yes. Vanderbilt Carty, Mrs. Bradman and I will have our coffee in here after dinner. And Mr. Condamine and Dr. Bradman will have theirs in the dining room. Is that quite clear? Yes, sir. And when you're serving dinner, Edith, try to remember to do it calmly and methodically. Yes, sir. As you're not in the Navy, it is unnecessary to do everything at the double. <laughs> Very good. And oh, 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 excuse me, sir. Uh, not at all, Edith, not at all. I had no business to get in your way. No, sir. Oh, I mean, yes, sir. No sign of the advancing hordes? Not yet. Have you tried to discourage Edith from being quite so fleet of foot? You mustn't mind if everything is a little slow motion tonight. I shall welcome it. The last few days have been extremely agitating. What do you suppose induced Agnes to leave us and go and get married? The reason was becoming increasingly obvious, dear. Yes, but in these days nobody thinks anything of that sort of thing. Uh, what will you have? A dry martini? Yes, darling. I expect Madame Arcati will want something sweeter. We'll have this one for ourselves, anyhow. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I have a feeling that this evening is going to be awful. It'll probably be funny, but not awful. You must promise not to catch my eye. If I giggle, and I'm very likely to, it'll ruin everything. Well, you mustn't. You must be dead serious, and if possible, a little intense. We can't hurt the old girl's feelings, however funny she is. Well, what? Bradman's, darling. He's as sceptical as we are. He probably said the most dreadful things. I've warned him. There must be more than three people, and we couldn't have the vicar and his wife, because A, they're dreary, and B, they probably wouldn't have approved at all. It had to be the Bradmans. Here, try this. Mmm, lovely. Dry as a bone. To the unseen. I must say, that's a wonderful title for a novel. If this evening's a success, I shall start on the first draft tomorrow. How extraordinary it is. What? Oh, I don't know. Being right at the beginning of something. You still Vera to be a help to you? When you were thinking something out, I mean. Every now and then, when she concentrated. But she didn't concentrate very often. I do wish I'd known her. I wonder if you'd have liked her. Oh, I'm sure I should. She sounds enchanting. And you know, I've never for an instant felt the least jealous of her. That's a good sign. Poor old Vera. Does it still hurt when you think of her? No, not really. Sometimes I almost wish it did. I, I feel rather guilty. I wonder if I died, if you forget me so soon. What a horrible thing to say. No, I think it's interesting. Well, to begin with, I haven't forgotten Elvira. I remember her very distinctly indeed. I remember how fascinating she was and how maddening. I remember how badly she played all games and how cross she got when she didn't win. I remember her gay charm when she had achieved her own way over something and her extreme acidity when she hadn't. I remember her physical attractiveness, which was... Tremendous. And her spiritual integrity, which was nil. You can't remember something that was nil. I remember how morally untidy she was. Was she more physically attractive than I am? That was a very tiresome question, dear, and fully deserves the wrong answer. You really are very sweet. Thank you. And a little naive, too. Why? Because you imagine I mind about Elvira being more physically attractive than I am. I should have thought any woman would mind, if it were true. Or perhaps I'm old-fashioned in my view of female psychology? Not exactly old-fashioned, darling. Just a bit didactic. I love you, my love. I know you do. Put my glass down, will you? Certainly. If I died, I wonder how long it would be before you married again. You won't die. You're not the dying sort. Neither was Elvira. Oh, yes, she was. Now that I look back on it. She had a certain ethereal, not-quite-of-this-world quality. Nobody could call you even remotely ethereal. Nonsense. She was of the earth, earthy. Well, she is now, anyhow. You know, that's the kind of observation that shocks people. I was devoted to Elvira. We were married for five years. She died. I missed her very much. That was seven years ago. I have now, with your help, my love, risen above the whole thing. Now, it's probably the Bradmans. Might be Madame O'Carty. I suppose she'll come on her bicycle. She always goes everywhere on her bicycle. It really is very spirited of the old girl. Uh, shall I go, or shall we let Edith have her fling? Wait a minute and see what happens. It's Doctor and Mrs. Bradman. 
We're not late, are we? I only got back from the hospital about half an hour ago. Oh, of course not. Uh, Madame Arcati isn't here yet. That must have been her we passed coming down the hill. I said I thought it was, and then she won't be long. I'm so glad you were able to come. We've been looking forward to it. I feel really quite excited. I guarantee that my wife will be good. I made her promise. <laughs> oh, then indeed, I'm absolutely thrilled. I've only seen Madame Arcati two or three times in the village. I mean, I've never seen her do anything at all peculiar, if you know what I mean. Dry martini? Oh, by all means. Uh, she certainly is a strange woman. Uh, it was only a chance remark of the vicar's that made me realise she was psychic at all. Do you believe in it, Mrs. Cantamine? Do you think there's anything really genuine about it at all? I'm afraid not. But I do think it's interesting how easily people allow themselves to be deceived. But she must believe it herself, mustn't she? Or is the whole business a fake? I suspect the worst. A real professional charlatan. Now, that's what I'm hoping for, anyhow. The character I'm planning for my book must be a complete imposter. What exactly are you hoping to get from her? A uh, jargon, principally. A uh, few of the tricks of the trade. Do you think she tells fortunes? I love having my fortune told. <laughs> I expect so. Here she is. Uh, she knows, doesn't she, about tonight? Uh, you're not going to uh, spring it on her? Well, of course, it was all arranged last week. I told her how profoundly interested I was in anything to do with the occult, and she blossomed like a rose. I really feel quite nervous, as though I were going to make a speech. Madame Arcati. I've lent my bike up against that little bush. It'll be perfectly all right if no one touches it. How nice of you to come all this way. My dear Madame Arcati. Oh, I'm afraid I'm rather late. But I had a sudden presentiment that I was going to have a puncture. So I went back to fetch my pump. <laughs> and then, of course, I didn't have a puncture at all. Perhaps you will on the way home. Dr. Bradman, the man with the gentle hands. I'm delighted to see you looking so well. But this is my wife. And we are old friends. We meet coming out of shops. Would you like a cocktail? If it's a dry martini, yes. If it's a concoction, no. Experience has taught me to be very wary of concoctions. It is a dry martini. Ah, how delicious. Ah, it was wonderful cycling through the woods this evening. I was deafened with birdsong. It's been lovely all day. But the evening was the time. Mark my words. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Don't you find it very tiring, bicycling everywhere? On the contrary, it stimulates me. I was getting far too sedentary in London. I must say, I find bicycling very exhausting. Steady rhythm. That's what counts. Once you get the knack of it, you never need look back. <laughs> On you get and away you go. Ah. You are a very clever man. Anybody can write books, but it takes an artist to make a dry martini that's dry enough. Dinner is served, madam. Thank you, Edith. Uh, no red meat, I hope. Well, there's meat, but I don't think it'll be very red. Would you rather have an egg or oh, something? No, no, thank you. It's just that I make it a rule never to eat red meat before I work. It sometimes has an odd effect. What sort of effect? Oh, nothing of the least importance. If it isn't very red, it won't matter much. Anyhow, we'll risk it, shall we? On her mother's side, she went right back to the Borgias, which I think accounted for a lot one way or another. Even as a child, she was given to the most violent, destructive tempers. Very inbred, you know. Yes, she must have been. My control was quite scared the other day when we were talking. I could hear it in her voice. After all, she's only a child. More coffee, Madame Arcati. Uh, no, thank you. Do you always have a child as a control? Yes, uh, they're generally the best. Some mediums prefer Red Indians, of course. But personally, I've always found them unreliable. In what way, unreliable? Well, for one thing, they're frightfully lazy. And also, when faced with any sort of difficulty, they're rather apt to go off into their own tribal language. <laughs> no, children are undoubtedly more satisfactory, particularly when they get to know you and understand your ways. Daphne has worked with me for years. And she still goes on being a child. I mean, she doesn't show signs of growing any older. Time values on the other side are utterly different from ours. Do you feel funny when you go off into a trance? Funny? Mrs. Bradman doesn't mean funny in its um, comic implication. I think 
She meant odd or strange. I'm sure I'm very sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter in the least. Please don't apologize. Oh, Here they are at last. Oh, well, Madame Arcati, the time is drawing near. Who knows? It may be receding. How oh, very true. I hope you feel in the mood, Madame Arcati. It isn't a question of mood. It's a question of concentration. You must forgive us being impatient. We can perfectly easily wait, though, if you're not quite ready to start. Nonsense, my dear. I'm absolutely ready. Hey-ho, to work we go. First, a few deep, deep breaths of fresh air. Uh, you may talk if you wish. It will not disturb me in the least. Ah, oh, dear. An excellent dinner, darling. I congratulate you. The mousse wasn't quite right. It looked a bit hysterical, but it tasted all right. That cuckoo is very angry. I beg your pardon? I said that cuckoo is very angry. Listen. How can you tell? Timbre. Oh, no moon. That's as well, I think. There's a mist rising from the marshes. Uh, there's no need for me to light my bicycle lamp, is there? I mean, nobody's likely to fall over it. No, we're not expecting anybody else. Good night, foolish bird. You have a table? Will this one do? Admirable, Mr. Condamine, admirable. Uh, will you all please sit round it? Now, I am going to walk about the room. Take no notice. No notice whatever. No, no, no. Of course not. <sighs> this is a moment I always hate. Are you nervous? <sighs> yes. When I was a girl, I always used to be sick. Uh, how fortunate that you grew out of it. Let uh, uh, Tommy Tucker sings for his supper. What shall he have but brown bread and butter? I despise that because it doesn't rhyme at all, but... Daphne loves it. Who's Daphne? Daphne is Madame Arcati's control. She's a little girl. Oh, she? Yes, of course. Now, will you all place your hands downwards on the table? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, what about the lights? Oh, all in good time, Mr. Condamine. The fingers should be touching. Huh? That's right. I presume that that is the gramophone, Mr. Condamine? Uh, yes. Would you like me to start it? Please, stay where you are. I can manage. Now, uh, let me see. Uh, what have we here? Uh, this will do. Always. Always. Charles, what is the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. The light switch is by the door? Yes, just on the left. Now, uh, there are one or two things that I should like to explain. So will you all listen attentively? Of course. <clears throat> Presently, when the music begins, I am going to switch out the lights. I neither neither walk about the room for a little or lie down flat. I must ask you not to address me or move or do anything in the least distracting. Is that quite, quite clear? Perfectly. Of course, I cannot guarantee that anything will happen at all. Daphne may be unavailable. She had a head cold very recently and was rather under the weather, poor child. On the other hand, a great many things might occur. One of you might have an emanation, for instance. Or we might contact a poltergeist, which would be extremely destructive. In what way? Destructive? They throw things, you know. No, I didn't know. But I, we must cross that bridge when we come to it, mustn't we? Now then, are you ready to empty your minds? I'll do my damnedest. Good work. I will now start the music. Oh, well. Ah, the delight. there? Is there anyone there? One rap for yes, two raps for no. 
Nothing. Is there anyone there? your cold better, dear? Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you doing anything for it? Mm, I'm afraid she's rather fretful. Is there anyone there who wishes to speak to anyone here? Ah, ah. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, no, Daphne, don't do that, dear. You're hurting me. Daphne, dear, please. Oh, oh. Be good. There's a dear child. Now, you say there is someone there who wishes to speak to someone here? Is it me? Is it Dr. Bradman? Is it Mrs. Bradman? Is it Mrs. Condamine? Oh, stop it. Behave yourself. Is it Mr. Condamine? There's someone who wishes to speak to you, Mr. Condamine. Tell them to leave a message. I really must ask you not to be flippant, Mr. Condamine. Charles, how can you be so idiotic? You'll spoil everything. I'm sorry, it slipped out. Do you know anybody who was passed over recently? Uh, not recently, except my cousin in the civil service. He wouldn't be likely to want to communicate with me. We haven't spoken for years. Are you Mr. Condamine's cousin in the civil service? Nobody there at all. Disappointing. Just as we were getting on so nicely. Violet, be quiet. Ah, I'm afraid there's nothing for it but for me to go into a trance. Excuse me a moment while I start the gramophone again. Not always. Uh, don't play always. Why, you're not, Charles. Don't be absurd. But I'm afraid I must. It would be imprudent to change horses in midstream, if you know what I mean. Have it your own way. Oh. That would be Daphne. Oh! Good Lord. Keep still, Charles. The table's trying to get away. I, I can't hold it. Let's stand hard. Oh, there now. Ought we to pick it up or leave it where it is? How the hell do I know? No need to snap at me. Leave it where it is. Who said that? Who said what? Somebody said leave it where it is. Nonsense, dear. I heard it stick. Well, nobody else did. Did they? I never heard a sound. It was you, Ruth. You're playing tricks. I'm not doing anything of the sort. I haven't uttered. Good evening, Charles. Ventriloquism, that's what it is. Ventriloquism. What is the matter with you? You must have heard that. One of you must have heard that. Heard what? You mean to sit there solemnly and tell me that none of you heard anything at all? I certainly didn't. Well, neither did I. I wish I had. I should love to hear something. You are playing the tricks, Charles. You're acting to try to frighten us. I'm not. I swear I'm not. It's difficult to think of what to say after seven years. But I suppose good evening is as good as anything else. Who are you? Elvira, of course. Don't be so silly. I can't bear this for another minute. Uh, get up, everybody. The entertainment's over. Uh, for goodness sake, let's have some light. Oh, Charles, how tiresome of you. Just when we're beginning to enjoy ourselves. Never again. That's all I can say. Never, never again, as long as I live. What on earth's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. I, I, I'm just sick of the whole business, that's all. Did you hear anything that we didn't hear, really? <laughs> oh, uh, of course not. I, I was only pretending. Uh -huh. I know you were. Oh, dear, look at Madame Arcati. She's unconscious. What are we to do with her? Uh, bring her round. Bring her round as soon as possible. Now, let me have a look. Hmm. I think we'd better leave her alone. She might stay like that for hours. Uh, wake up, Madame Arcati. Wake up. It's time to go home. Here, go easy, old man. Uh, Ruth, uh, get, get some brandy. Uh, Bradman, help me lift her into that chair. <coughs> wake up, Madame Arcati. Little Tommy Tucker, Madame Arcati. Hmm. Wake up. <laughs> she, she's coming round. Oh, well, that's that. Are you all right? Certainly I am. Never felt better in my life. Well, what happened? Was it satisfactory? Nothing much happened, Madame Arcati, after you went off. No poltergeist, at any rate. That's a good thing. Any apparitions? Not a thing. No ectoplasm. I'm not quite 
quite sure what it is, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Very curious. I feel that there's something tremendous had taken place. Well, Charles pretended he heard a voice in order to frighten us. It was only a joke. A very poor one, if I may say so. Mm, nevertheless, I am prepared to swear that there is someone else psychic in this room apart from myself. Well, I don't see how that can be really, Madame Arcati. I do hope I haven't gone and released something. However, we're bound to find out within a day or two. If any manifestation should occur or you hear any unexpected noises, you might let me know at once. Of course we will. We'll telephone immediately. Good. Well, I think I really must be on my way now. Good night, Mrs. Condonin. It was awfully sweet of you to take so much trouble. Oh, I'm so sorry. So little occurred. It's that cold of Daphne's, I expect. You know what children are when they have anything wrong with them. <laughs> oh, we must try again another evening. That would be lovely. Oh, good night, Mrs. Bradman. It was thrilling. It really was. I felt the table absolutely shaking under my hand. Good night, Doctor. Congratulations, Madam McCarthy. I'll see you to your bicycle. Good night, everyone. Next time we must really put our backs in. mad, of course. Mad as a hatter. But do you really think she believes? Oh, of uh, course not. The whole thing's a put-up job. <laughs> I must say, though, she shoots a more original line than they generally do. I do hope Mr. Condamine got all the atmosphere he wanted for his book. He might look at a great deal more if he hadn't spoiled everything by showing off. I'm really very cross with him. <sighs> Sudden felt a draft. There must be a window open. No. They're shut. Well, the old girl's gone peddling off down the drive at the hell of a speed. Good for her. Uh, you must have a drink before you go. No, really, thank you. I've got to get up abominably early tomorrow. It's been a thrilling evening. I shall never forget it. It was sweet of you to include us. Good night, Mrs. Condamine. Thank you so much. We'll let you know if we find any poltergeists swirling about. I should never <laughs> forgive you if you didn't. Uh, did you have a coat, yes, uh, Mr. Brown? Yes, I did. Uh, why about you, Lord? darling. Well? Would you say the evening had been profitable? Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> I must say it was extremely funny at moments. Yes, it certainly was. What's the matter? The matter? Yes, you seem odd somehow. Do you feel quite well? Uh, perfectly. I, I think I'll have a drink. Do you want one? No, thank you, dear. It's rather chilly in this room. I thought I felt a draft a few minutes ago. I don't think I'll make any notes tonight. I'll start fresh in the morning. <gasps> Charles! That was very clumsy, Charles, dear. Elvira, then it's true. It was you. Of course it was. Charles? <laughs> Darling, Charles, what are you talking about? Are you a ghost? I suppose I must be. It's all very confusing. Charles, look at me. What's happened? Don't you see? See what? Elvira. Elvira? Yes. Elvira, dear, this is Ruth. Ruth, this is Elvira. Come and sit down, darling. Do you mean to say you can't see her? Listen, Charles, you just sit down quietly by the fire and I'll mix you another drink. But you must be able to see her. She's there. Look, right in front of you. There. Are you mad? What's happened to you? You can't see her? Now, if this is a joke, dear, it's gone quite far enough. Sit down and don't be idiotic. What am I to do? What the hell am I to do? I think you might at least be a little more pleased to see me. After all, you conjured me up. I didn't do any such thing. Nonsense, of course you did. That awful child with a cold came and told me you wanted to see me. Urgently. It was all a mistake. A horrible mistake. No, stop talking like that, Charles. As I told you before, the joke's gone far enough. I've gone mad, that's what it is. I, 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 I've just gone raving mad. For goodness sake, relax while I get some brandy. Oh, how can I relax? I shall never be able to relax again as long as I live. <clears throat> and drink this. Well, now, are you satisfied? Now sit down. Why are you so anxious for me to sit down? What good will that do? I want you to relax. You can't relax standing up. African natives can. They can stand on one leg for hours. I don't happen to be an African native. 
You don't happen to be a what? An African native. What has that got to do with it? Uh, it doesn't matter, Ruth. Really, it doesn't matter. We, we'll say no more about it. Look, I've sat down. Would you like some more brandy? Uh, yes, please. Very unwise. You always had a weak head. I could drink you under the table. There's no need to be aggressive, Charles. I'm doing my best to help you. I'm sorry. There you are. When you've drunk that, you'll go to bed. Get rid of her, Charles. Then we can talk in peace. That's a thoroughly immoral suggestion. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What is there immoral in that? I wasn't talking to you. Who were you talking to, then? Elvira, of course. Oh, to hell with Elvira. There now. She's getting cross. I don't blame her. What don't you blame her for? Oh, Lord. Now, look here, Charles. I gather you've got some sort of a plan behind all this. I'm not quite a fool. I suspected you when we were doing that idiotic seance. Oh, that was so silly. What plan could I have? Well, I don't know. It's probably something to do with the characters in your book, how they, or one of them, would react to a certain situation. I refuse to be used as a guinea pig unless I've been warned beforehand what it's all about. Elvira is here, Ruth. She's standing a few yards away from you. <laughs> yes, dear. I can see her distinctly under the piano with a zebra. But, Ruth... I'm not going to stay here arguing any longer. Hooray! Shut up. How dare you speak to me like that? Listen, Ruth, please, listen. I will not listen to any more of this nonsense. I'm going up to bed now. I'll leave you to turn out the lights. I shan't be asleep. I'm too upset. So you can come in and say good night to me if you feel like it. That's big of her, I must say. Be quiet. You're behaving like a gutter snipe. That is all I have to say. Good night, Charles. Wrong. Oh. That was one of the most enjoyable scenes I have ever witnessed. Oh, Elvira, how could you? For her, Ruth. This is obviously an hallucination, isn't it? I'm afraid I don't know the technical term for it. What am I to do? What Ruth suggested. Relax. Where have you come? From. Do you know it's very peculiar, but I've sort of forgotten. Are you to be here indefinitely? I don't know that either. Would you hate it so much if I was? Well, you must admit it would be embarrassing. I don't see why, really. It's all a question of adjusting yourself. Anyway, I think it's horrid of you to be so unwelcoming and disagreeable. Now, look here, Elvira. I do. I think you're mean. Try to see my point, dear. I, I've been married to Ruth for five years, and you've been dead for seven. Not dead, Charles. Passed over. It's considered vulgar to say dead where I come from. Oh, passed over, then. At any rate, now I'm here. The least you can do is to make a pretense of being amiable about it. Well, of course, my dear, I'm delighted in one way. I don't believe you love me any more. I shall always love the memory of you. You mustn't think me unreasonable, but I really am a little hurt. You called me back, and at great inconvenience I came, and you've been thoroughly churlish ever since I arrived. Uh, believe me, Elvira, I most emphatically did not send for you. There's been some mistake. Well, somebody did, and that child said it was you. I remember I was playing backgammon with a very sweet old oriental gentleman. I think his name was Genghis Khan. And I'd just thrown double sixes, and then the child paged me. And the next thing I knew, I was in this room. Perhaps it was your subconscious. You must find out whether you are going to stay or not, and we can make arrangements accordingly. I don't see how I can. Well, try to think. Isn't there anyone that you know that you can get in touch with over there, or on the other side, or whatever it's called, who could advise you? I can't think. It seems so far away, as though I dreamed it. You must know somebody else beside Genghis Khan. Oh, Charles. What is it? I want to cry, but I don't think I'm able to. What do you want to cry for? It's seeing you again, and you being so irascible, like you always used to be. I don't mean to be irascible, Elvira. Darling, I don't mind really. I never did. Is it cold? Being a ghost? No, I don't think so. What happens if I touch you? I doubt if you can. Do you want to? Oh, Elvira. What is it, darling? I really do feel strange seeing you again. That's better. What's better? Your voice is kinder. Was I ever unkind to you when you were alive? Often. Oh, how can you? I'm sure that's an exaggeration. Not at all. You were an absolute pig that time we went to Cornwall and stayed in that awful hotel. You hit me with a billiard cue. Oh, only very, very gently. I loved you very much. I loved you too. No, I can't touch you. Isn't that horrible? 
Perhaps it's as well if I'm going to stay for any length of time. I suppose I shall wake up eventually. But I feel strangely peaceful now. That's right. Put your head back. Like that? Can you feel me stroking your hair? Only a very little breeze. Well, that's better than nothing. I suppose if I'm really out of my mind, they'll put me in an asylum. Don't worry about that. Just relax. Poor Ruth. To hell with Ruth. Darling. Good morning, Charles. It certainly is. What certainly is what? A good morning, a tremendously good morning. There isn't a cloud in the sky and everything looks newly washed. Edith's keeping your breakfast hot. You'd better ring. I intend to work all day. Good. It's extraordinary about daylight, isn't it? How do you mean? The way it reduces everything to normal. Does it? Yes, it does. I'm sure I'm very glad to hear it. You're very glacial this morning. Are you surprised? Frankly, yes. I expected more of you. Oh, no, really? I've always looked upon you as a woman of perception and understanding. Perhaps this is one of my off days. Ah, uh, good morning, Edith. Good morning, sir. Feeling fit? Yes, sir, thank you, sir. How's Cook? I don't know, sir. I'm nasty. You should. You should begin every day by asking everyone how they are. It oils the wheels. Yes, sir. Greet her from me, will you? Yes, sir. That will be all for the moment, Edith. I wish you wouldn't be facetious with the servants, Charles. It confuses them and undermines the morale. I consider that point of view retrogressive, if not downright futile. I don't care what you consider it. I have to run the house and you don't. Are you implying that I couldn't? You are at liberty to try. I take back what I said about it being a good morning. You better eat your breakfast while it's hot. It isn't. Now, look here, Charles. In your younger days, this display of roguish flippancy might have been alluring. In a middle-aged novelist, it's nauseating. Would you like me to writhe at your feet in a frenzy of self-abasement? That would be equally nauseating, but certainly more appropriate. I really don't see what I've done that's so awful. You behaved abominably last night. You wounded me and insulted me. I was the victim of an aberration. Nonsense. You were drunk. You refused to come to bed. And finally, when I came down at three in the morning to see what had happened to you... I found you in an alcoholic coma on the sofa with the fire out and your hair all over your face. Ruth, I swear to you that during the seance, I was convinced that I heard Elvira's voice. Nobody else did. I can't help that. I did. You couldn't have. And later on, I was equally convinced that she was in this room. I saw her distinctly and I talked to her. After you'd gone up to bed, we had quite a cosy little chat. <laughs> and you seriously expect me to believe that you weren't drunk? I wasn't drunk. I know what it is, Ruth. We were talking too much about Elvira. It's dangerous to have somebody very strongly in your mind when you start dabbling with the occult. She certainly wasn't strongly in my mind. She was in mine. No, yeah, she was, was she? Women. What I think of women. Your view on women is academic, to say the least of it. Just because you've always been dominated by them, it doesn't necessarily follow that you know anything about them. I've never been dominated by anyone. You were hag-ridden by your mother until you were 23. Then you got into the clutches of that awful Mrs. whatever her name was. Mrs. Winthrop Llewellyn. I'm not interested. Then there was Elvira. She ruled you with a rod of iron. Elvira never ruled anyone. She was much too elusive. It was one of her greatest charms. Then there was Maud Chartres. My affair with Maud Chartres lasted exactly seven and a half weeks, and she cried all the time. Tyranny of tears. The only woman in my life who's ever attempted to dominate me is you. You've been at it for years. That is completely untrue. Oh, no, it isn't. You boss me and bully me and order me about. Last night, instead of putting out a gentle, comradely hand to guide me, you shouted staccato orders at me like a sergeant major. You seem to forget that you gratuitously insulted me. I did not. You called me a gutter snipe. You told me to shut up. And when I quietly suggested that we should go up to bed, you said, with the most disgusting leer, that it was an immoral suggestion. I was talking to Elvira. If you were, I can only say that it conjures up a fragrant picture of your first marriage. My first marriage was perfectly charming, and I think it's in the worst possible taste for you to sneer at it. I am not nearly so interested in your first marriage as you think I am. It's your second marriage that is absorbing me at the moment. It seems to me to be on the rocks. 
Only because you persist in taking up this ridiculous attitude. My attitude is that of any normal woman whose husband gets drunk and hurls abuse at her. I was not drunk. Be quiet. They'll hear you in the kitchen. I don't care if they hear me in the Folkestone Town Hall. Can I clear, please? Uh, yes, Edith. Cook wants to know about lunch, Mum. Will you be into lunch, Charles? Please don't worry about me. I should be perfectly happy with a bottle of gin in my bedroom. Don't be silly, darling. Edith, you may tell Cook we shall both be in. Yes. Please, Ruth, be reasonable. I am perfectly reasonable. I wasn't pretending. I really did believe that I saw Elvira, and when I heard her voice, I was appalled. You put up with it for five years. When I saw her, I had the shock of my life. That's why I dropped the glass. But you couldn't have seen her. I know I couldn't have, but I did. I'm willing to concede, then, that you imagined you did. Well, that's what I've been trying to explain to you for hours. Well, then, there's obviously something wrong with you. How do you feel now? Apart from being worried, I feel quite normal. Good. You're not hearing or seeing anything in the least unusual. Not a thing. You've absolutely ruined that border by the sundial. Oh, Lord. It looks like a mixed salad. What's the matter now? She's here again. What do you mean, who's here again? Oh, Vera. Oh, pull yourself together and don't be absurd. It's all those nasturtiums. They're so vulgar. I like nasturtiums. Like what? They're all right in moderation. But in a mass like that, they look beastly. Help me, Ruth. You've got to help me. What did you mean about nasturtiums? Oh, never mind about that now. I tell you, she's here again. You have been having a nice scene, haven't you? I could hear you right down the garden. Please mind your own business. If you're behaving like a lunatic isn't my business, nothing is. I expect it was about me, wasn't it? I know I ought to feel sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm delighted. How can you be so inconsiderate? Inconsiderate? I like that, I must say. Oh, Ruth, darling, I've please. I've done everything I can to help. I've controlled myself admirably. I should like to say here and now that I don't believe a word about your damned hallucinations. For some obscure reason, you're trying to goad me into doing something I might regret. I won't stand for it anymore. You're making me utterly miserable. Ruth, please. Don't come near me. Let her have a nice cry. It'll do her good. You're utterly heartless. I was not talking to you. I was talking to Elvira. Well, go on talking to her then. Talk until you're blue in the face, but don't talk to me. Help me, Elvira. How? Make her see you or something. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't manage that. It's technically the most difficult business. You are here, aren't you? You're not an illusion. I may be an illusion, but I am most definitely here. How did you get here? I told you last night. I don't exactly know. Well, you must promise that in future you only come and talk to me when I'm alone. How unkind you are, making me feel so unwanted. I've never been treated so rudely. I don't mean to be rude, but you must see that... It's all your own fault for having married a woman who's incapable of seeing beyond the nose on her face. If she had a grain of real sympathy or affection for you, she'd believe what you tell her. How could you expect anybody to believe this? You'd be surprised how gullible people are. We often laugh about it on the other side. Charles? Yes, dear. Uh, I'm awfully sorry I was cross. But, my dear, I... I understand uh... everything. Now, I do, really. You do? Of course I do. Look out. She's up to something. Will you please be quiet? Of course, darling. We'll all be quiet, won't we? We'll be as quiet as little mice. Ruth, dear, listen. I want you to come upstairs with me and go to bed. The way that woman harps on bed. I'll deal with you later. Very well, darling. Come along. What are you up to? I'm not up to anything. I just want you to go quietly to bed and wait there until Dr. Bradman comes. No, Ruth, you're wrong. Come, dear. She'll have you in a straitjacket before you know where you are. Elvira, help me. You must help me. Oh, my dear, I would with pleasure, but I can't think how. I can. Uh, listen, Ruth. Yes, dear. If I promise to go to bed, Will you let me stay here for five minutes longer? I really do think it would be better. Bear with me, however mad it may seem. Bear with me for just five minutes longer. Very well. What is it? Sit down. All right. There. Now, listen. Listen carefully. Have a cigarette. Huh? It'll soothe your nerves. I don't want a cigarette. Then you shan't have one, darling. Ruth, 
I want to explain to you clearly and without emotion that beyond any shadow of doubt, the ghost or shade, or whatever you like to call it, of my first wife, Elvira, is in this room now. Yes, dear. I know you don't believe it and are trying valiantly to humor me, but I intend to prove it to you. Well, why not lie down and have a nice rest? And you can prove anything you want later on. She may not be here later on. Don't worry. I will. Oh, Lord. Oh, hush, dear. Um, uh, Elvira, will you promise to do what I ask? That all depends what it is. Ruth, you see that bowl of flowers on the piano? Yes, dear. I did it myself this morning. Very untidily, if I may say so. You may not. Very well. I never will again, I promise. Uh, Elvira will now carry that bowl of flowers to the mantelpiece and back again. You will, Elvira, won't you? Just to please me. I don't really see why I should. You've been quite insufferable to me ever since I materialized. Please. All right. I will. Just this once. Now, Ruth, watch carefully. Very well, dear. Go on, Elvira. Take it to the mantelpiece and back again. How dare you, Charles? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What on earth for? It's a trick. I know perfectly well it's a trick. You've been working up to this. It's all part of some horrible plan. It isn't. I swear it isn't. Uh, Elvira, for heaven's sake, do something else. Certainly. Anything to oblige. You want to get rid of me? You're trying to drive me out of my mind. Well, don't be so silly. Elvira, please. Suppose I break that hideous vase on the mantelpiece. Elvira! Charles! That vase! It's moving! Oh, this is madness, sheer madness. It's some sort of auto-suggestion, isn't it? Some form of hypnotism. Oh, swear to me, it's only that. Swear to me, it's only that. Hypnotism, my foot. <laughs> my dear Mrs. Condonin, I came directly. I got your message. That was very kind of you, Madame Arcati. Kind? <laughs> Nonsense. Nothing kind about it. I look upon it as an outing. I'm so glad. Will you have some tea? Uh, China or Indian? Uh, China? Oh, good. I never touch Indian. It upsets my vibrations. <laughs> Madame Arcati, I'm profoundly disturbed. I want your help. Ah, I thought as much. What's in these sandwiches? Cucumber. Couldn't be better. Now, oh. come now. Take the plunge. Out with it. Well, I know it sounds idiotic, but the night before last, during the seance, something happened. I knew it. Probably a poltergeist. Oh, they're enormously cunning, you know. They sometimes lie doggo for days. You know that my husband was married before? Yes, I've heard it mentioned. His first wife, Elvira, died comparatively young. Where? Here, in this house, in this very room. And she materialized the other evening after I'd gone? Not to me, to my husband. Capital, capital. Oh, but that's splendid. From your own professional standpoint, I can see that it might be regarded as a major achievement. A triumph, my dear. Nothing more or less than a triumph. But from my own personal point of view, it is, to say the least of it, embarrassing. Forgive me, Mrs. Condamine. I'm being abominably selfish. How can I help you? How? By sending her back immediately to where she came from. Uh, I am afraid that that is easier said than done. You mean to tell me that she's liable to stay here indefinitely? It's uh, difficult to say. Um, I, I fear it depends largely on her. Oh, but my dear Madame Arcati... Where is she now? Uh, my husband has driven her into Folkestone. Uh, apparently she was anxious to see an old friend of hers. When did she pass over? Seven years ago. Ah. She'd never have been able to manage a return visit unless there was a strong influence at work. Do you mean that Charles, my husband, wanted her back all that much? Possibly. Or it might have been her own determination. That sounds much more likely. Would you say that she was a woman of strong character? But I really don't know, Madame Arcati. I never met her. Nor am I particularly interested in how or why she got here. I am solely concerned with the question of how to get her away again as soon as possible. I fully sympathize with you, Mrs. Condamine, and I assure you I will do anything in my power to help. 
but the time has come for me to admit to you, frankly, that I haven't the faintest idea how to set about it. You mean to tell me that having mischievously conjured up this ghost or spirit or whatever it is she is and placed me in a hideous position, you're unable to do anything about it at all? Honesty is the best policy. Oh, but it's outrageous. I was in a trance. Anything might happen when I'm in a trance. Well, all I can suggest is that you go into another one immediately and get this damned woman out of my house. I can't go into trances at a moment's notice. It takes hours of preparation. Oh, it's too humiliating. It really is. Try to look on the bright side, Mrs. Condonese. Bright side, indeed. If your husband's first wife suddenly appeared from the grave and came to live in the house with you, do you suppose you'd be able to look on the bright side? I resent your tone, Mrs. Condamin. I really do. You most decidedly have no right to. You're entirely to blame for the whole horrible situation. Kindly remember that I came here the other night on your own invitation. On my husband's invitation? I did what I was requested to do, which was to give a seance and establish contact with the other side. I no idea that there was any ulterior motive mixed up with it. Ulterior motive? Your husband was obviously eager to get in touch with his former wife. If I'd been aware of that at the time, I should naturally have consulted you beforehand. After all, noblesse oblige. He had no intention of trying to get in touch with anyone. The whole thing was planned in order for him to get material for a mystery story he's writing about a homicidal medium. Am I to understand that I was only invited in a spirit of mockery? Oh, not at all. He merely wanted to make notes of some of the tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade? Oh, insufferable. I've never been so insulted in my life. I feel we have nothing more to say to one another, Mrs. Condamine. Goodbye. Oh, please don't go. Please. Oh, damn, damn, damn. Oh, Charles, there you are. Well, I suppose Elvira is still with you. Yes, of course she is. What on earth is Madame Arcati doing here? <sighs> she came to see me. Did you ask her? I did. You never told me you were going to? You never told me you were going to ask Elvira to live with us. I didn't. Oh, yes, you did, darling. It was your subconscious. What was the old girl so cross about? She cut me dead in the hall just now. I told her the truth about why we invited her here the other night. That was quite unnecessary and most unkind. But why did you ask her to tea? To get me exorcised, of course. Oh, dear. I wish I could have a cucumber sandwich. I did love them so. Is that true, Ruth? What's true? What Elvira said? You know perfectly well I can't hear what Elvira says. She said that you got Madame Arcati here to try to get her exorcised. Is that true? We discussed the possibilities. There's a snake in the grass. You had no right to do such a thing without consulting me. I have every right. This situation is absolutely impossible and you know it. If only you make an effort to try to be a little more friendly to Elvira, we might all have quite a jolly time. I have no wish to have a jolly time with Elvira. She's certainly very bad-tempered, isn't she? I can't think why you married her. Which is naturally a bit upset. We must all make allowances. I was never bad-tempered, though, was I, darling? Not even when you were beastly to me. I was never beastly to you. Where is Elvira at the moment? In the chair by the table. <clears throat> now, look here, Elvira. I should like to call you Elvira, shan't I? I can't very well go on saying Mrs. Condamine all the time. It would sound too silly. I don't see why. Did she say anything? She said she'd like nothing better. <laughs> you really are sweet, Charles, darling. I worship you. I wish to be absolutely honest with you, Elvira. Hold on to your hats, boys. I admit, I did ask Madame Arcati here with a view to getting you exorcised. And I think that if you were in my position, you would have done exactly the same thing, wouldn't you? I shouldn't have done it so obviously. What did she say? Oh, nothing. Uh, she just nodded and smiled. Oh, thank you, Elvira. That's generous of you. <laughs> I really would so much rather that there were no misunderstandings between us. Uh, it's very sensible, Ruth. I agree entirely. Before we go any further, Elvira, <laughs> I want to ask you a frank question. Why did you really come here? I don't see that you could have hoped to have achieved anything by it beyond the immediate joke of making Charles into a sort of astral bigamist. I came because the power of Charles's love tugged 
and tugged and tugged at me. <laughs> Didn't it, my sweet? <laughs> what did she say? Uh, 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 she said she came because she wanted to see me again. Well, she's done that now, hasn't she? We can't be inhospitable, Ruth. I have no wish to be inhospitable. But I should like to have just an idea how long you intend to stay, Elvira. I don't know. I really don't know. Isn't it awful? She says she doesn't know. Surely that's a little inconsiderate. Didn't the old spiritualist have any constructive ideas about getting rid of me? What did Madame Arcati say? She said she couldn't do a thing. Hooray. Oh, Charles. Charles. She's off again. You really must not be so callous, Elvira. Try to see her point a little. I suppose she said something insulting. No, no, dear. She didn't do anything of the sort. Now, look here, Elvira. She's by the window now. Oh, why the hell can't she stay in the same place? Temper again. My poor Charles. What a terrible life you must lead. Do shut up, darling. You'll only make everything worse. Well, who was that darling addressed to? Her or me? Both of you. Oh, this is intolerable. I am now going out to my room. And I shall have my dinner on a tray. And you and she can have the house to yourselves and joke and gossip with each other to your heart's content. The first thing in the morning, I'm going up to London to interview the Psychic League. And if they fail me, I shall go straight to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Ruth! Let her go. She'll calm down later on. It's not like her to behave like this. She's generally so equable. No, she isn't. Not really. Her mouth gives her away. It's a hard mouth, Charles. Her mouth's got nothing to do with it. I resent you discussing Ruth as though she were a horse. Do you love her? Of course I do. As much as you love me? Don't be silly. It's all entirely different. I'm so glad. Nothing could ever have been quite the same, could it? You always behave very badly. Oh, Charles. I'm grieved to see that your sojourn in the other world hasn't improved you in the least. Go on, darling. I love it when you pretend to be cross with me. I am now going up to talk to Ruth. Cowardly custard. Don't be idiotic. I can't let her go like that. I must be a little nice and sympathetic to her. I don't see why. If she's set on being disagreeable, I should just let her get on with it. The whole business is very difficult for her. We must be fair. She should learn to be more adaptable. She probably will in time. It's been a shock. Has it been a shock for you too, darling? Of course. What did you expect? A nice shock. What do you want, Elvira? What? I don't know what you mean. I remember that whenever you were overpoweringly demure, it usually meant that you wanted something. Oh, it's horrid of you to be so suspicious. All I want is to be with you. Well, you are. I mean, alone, darling. If you go and pamper Ruth and smarm her over, she'll probably come flouncing down again, and our lovely quiet evening together will be spoiled. You're incorrigibly selfish. Well, I haven't seen you for seven years. It's only natural that I should want a little time alone with you to talk over old times. I'll let you go up for just a little while if you really think it's your duty. Of course it's my duty. Then I don't mind. You're disgraceful, Elvira. You won't be long, will you? You will come down again very soon. I shall probably dress for dinner while I'm upstairs. Darling, you don't have to dress for me. I always dress for dinner. <laughs> what are you going to have? I should like to watch you eat something really delicious. Be a good girl now. You can play the gramophone, if you like. Thank you, Charles. Does it show any signs of clearing? No, it's still pouring. I do sympathize with you, really, I do. It's really been quite a chapter of accidents, hasn't it? It certainly has, Mrs. Bradman. That happens sometimes, you know. Everything seems to go wrong at once. Exactly as though there were some evil forces at work. You're sure you wouldn't like a cocktail or some sherry or anything? No, thank you, really not. George will be down in a moment and we've got to go like lightning. We were supposed to be at the Wilmots at seven and it's nearly that now. I'll have a little sherry. I feel I need it. 
Don't worry about your husband's arm, Mrs. Condamine. I'm sure it's only a sprain. It's not his arm I'm worried about. And I'm sure Edith will be up and about again in a few days. Nothing to worry about, Mrs. Condamine. It's only a slight sprain. Oh, Doctor, I'm so relieved. It made a good deal of fuss when I examined it. Men are much worse patients than women, you know, particularly highly strung men like her husband. Is he highly strung, do you think? Yes. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about that. I'm afraid he's been overworking lately. Overworking? Of course, the shock of his fall might have something to do with it, but I certainly should advise a complete rest for a couple of weeks. Oh, you mean he ought to go away? I do. In cases like that, a change of atmosphere can work wonders. What um, symptoms did you notice? Oh, nothing to be unduly alarmed about. A certain air of strain and inability to focus his eyes on the person he's talking to. A few rather marked irrelevances in his conversation. Yes, well, he often goes like that, particularly when he's uh, immersed in writing a book. Well, I'm not in the least perturbed about it, really, but I do think a rest and a change would be a good idea. Thank you so much, Doctor. Would you like some sherry? No, thank you. We really must be off. How is poor Edith? Oh, she'll be all right in a few days. She's still recovering from the concussion. And um, see that she doesn't take that bandage off. Funny, isn't it, that both your housemaid and your husband should fall down on the same day, isn't it? Yes, if that sort of thing amuses you. Oh, of course, I didn't mean it like that, Mrs. Condon. Oh, come along, my dear. You're talking too much, as usual. Oh, horrid, George. Goodbye, Mrs. Condamine. Mm, goodbye. I'll pop in and have a look at both patients sometime tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. Oh, Condamine. Well, how does it feel? All right. It's only a slight sprain, you know. Is this damn sling really essential? It's a wise precaution. It will prevent you using your left hand, except when it's really necessary. I had intended to drive in Folkestone this evening. It would be much better if you didn't. It's extremely inconvenient. You can easily wait and go tomorrow, Charles. I can't stand another of those dreary evenings at home, Charles. And I haven't seen a movie for seven years. Let me be the first to congratulate you. What's that, old man? Charles, dear, try to be sensible, I implore you. Uh, sorry, I forgot. You can drive the car if you promise to go very slowly and carefully. Your gear change is on the right, isn't it? Yes. yes. Well, use your left hand as little as possible. All right. You'd much better stay at home. Couldn't you drive him in? I'm afraid not. I have lots to do in the house. And as Edith to be attended to. Well, I'll leave you to fight it out among yourselves. But remember, Condamine, if you do insist on going carefully, does it? The roads are very slippery, you know. Come along, Barrett. Goodbye again. Goodbye, Mr. Condamine. Uh, goodbye. I I'll see you out. Thank you. Um, how long am I going to have to wear this down thing? Matter of days. You really are infuriating, Elvira. Surely you could wait and go to the movies another night. Elvira? Stop behaving like a schoolgirl. You're old enough to know better. What? I was talking to Elvira. She isn't here. She was a moment ago. She threw a rose at me. She's been very high-spirited all day. I know this mood of old. It usually meant that she was up to something. Charles, you're quite sure she isn't here. Quite sure. I want to talk to you. Oh, Lord. I must. It's important. You've behaved very well for the last week, Ruth. You're not going to start making scenes again, are you? I resent that air of patronage, Charles. I have behaved well, as you call it, because there's nothing else to do. But I think it's only fair to warn you that I offer no guarantee for the future. My patience has been stretched to its uttermost. As far as I can see, the position is just as difficult for Elvira as it is for you, if not more so. Poor little thing comes back trustingly after all those years in the other world, and what is she faced with? Nothing but brawling and hostility. What did she expect? Surely even an ectoplasmic manifestation has the right to expect a little of the milk of human kindness. Milk of human fiddlesticks. That just doesn't make sense, dear. Her purpose is perfectly obvious. It is to get you to herself forever. That's absurd. How could she? By killing you off, of course. Killing me off? You're mad. Why do you suppose Edith fell down the stairs and nearly cracked her skull? What's Edith got to do with it? Because the whole of the top stair was covered with axle grease. Cook discovered it afterwards. You're making this up, Ruth. No, I'm not. I swear I'm not. Why do you suppose, when you were lopping that dead branch off the pear tree, that the ladder broke? because it had been practically thorn through on both sides. Well, but why should she want to kill me? I, I can understand her wanting to kill you, but why me? If you were dead, it would be her final triumph over me. 
she'd have you with her forever on her damned astral plane and I'd be left high and dry. She's probably planning a sort of spiritual remarriage. I wouldn't put anything past her. Ruth. Oh, for heaven's sake, stop looking like a wounded spaniel and concentrate. This is serious. What are we to do? You're not to let her know that we suspect a thing. Behave perfectly ordinarily as though nothing had happened. I'm going to Madame Arcati immediately. If a trance is necessary, she shall go into a trance if I have to beat her into it. I'll be back in half an hour. Tell Elvira I've gone to see the vicar. This is appalling. Never mind about that. Remember now, don't give yourself away by so much as a flick of an eyelid. Look out. What? I merely said it's a nice look out. What? A nice look out. The weather, Elvira. The glass is going down and down and down. It's positively macabre. I find it difficult to believe that you and Ruth at this particular moment can't think of anything more interesting to talk about than the weather. Oh, I can't stand this any more. I really can't. Ruth, dear, please. Has she broken out again? What did you say? She asked if you had broken out again. How dare you talk like that, Elvira? Now then, Ruth. Charles and I were not talking about the weather, Elvira, as you so very shrewdly suspected. I was trying to persuade him not to drive you into Folkestone this evening. He'll be bad for his arm, and you can perfectly well wait until tomorrow. However, as he seems to be determined to place your wishes before mine in everything, I have nothing to say. I'm sure I hope you enjoy yourselves. There now. Oh, Charles. Have you been beastly to her? No. Ruth doesn't like being thwarted any more than you do. She's a woman of sterling character. It's a pity she's so ungiddy. As I told you before, I would rather not discuss Ruth with you. It makes me uncomfortable. I won't mention her again. Are you ready? What for? To go to Folkestone, of course. I want a glass of sherry first. I don't believe you want to take me at all. Of course I want to take you, but I still think it'd be sensible to wait until tomorrow. It's a filthy night. Oh, how familiar this is. In what way familiar? All through our married life, I had only to suggest something for you immediately to start hedging me off. I'm not hedging you off. I merely said all that... All right, it... all right. We'll spend another cosy, intimate evening at home with Ruth sewing away at that hideous table centre and snapping at us like a terrier. If you don't behave yourself, I shan't take you into Folkestone ever. Please, Charles, don't be elderly and grand with me. Please, let's go. Now. Not until I've finished my sherry. Oh, what tiresome, darling. I've been waiting about for hours. A few more minutes won't make any difference, then. No, oh, very well. Besides, the car won't be back for half an hour at least. What do you mean? Ruth's taken it. She had to go and see the vicar. What? What on earth is the matter? You say Ruth's taken the car? Yes, to go and see the vicar, but she won't be long. Stop her. You must stop her at once. Why? What for? Stop her! Stop her! Go out and stop her immediately! What are you going on like this for? What have you done? Done? I haven't done anything. Elvira, you're lying. I'm not lying. What is there to lie about? What are you in such a state for? I'm not in a state. I don't know what you mean. You've done something dreadful. No, I haven't. Don't look at me like that, Charles. I haven't. I swear I haven't. Elvira, the car! No, Charles, no. Ruth was right. You did want to kill me. You've done something to the car. <laughs> what did you do? Answer me. Hello? Hello? Yes, speaking? I see. The bridge at the bottom of the hill. Oh, no. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, I'll come at once. Of all the filthy, low-down tricks. Ow! Stop it! Ruth! Leave me! Let go! Ruth! 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 Let go! I tell you, Ruth! Ah! Ruth! I hope you will not consider this an intrusion, Mr. Condamine. Uh, not at all, Madame Arcati. I felt a tremendous urge like a rushing wind, and so I hopped on my bike, and here I am. It was my duty. I allowed myself to get into a huff the other day with your late wife. I've regretted it ever since. My dear Madam Arcot. Oh, please, let me go on. Mine is the shame. Mine is the blame. 
I shall never forgive myself. I threw up the sponge. In a moment of crisis, I threw up the sponge instead of throwing down the gauntlet. Whatever you threw, Madame Arcati, I very much fear that nothing could have been done. I cannot bring myself to admit defeat so easily. It is gall and wormwood to me. Never mind. I do mind. I mind with every fibre of my being. I've been thinking very carefully. I've also been reading up a few formulae during these last dreadful days. I gather that uh, we are alone. Uh, my first wife is not in the room. She's upstairs lying down. The funeral exhausted her. I imagine that my second wife is with her, but as I can't see her, I have no way of knowing for certain. Well, Mr. Condamine, all is not lost. Charles. What on earth's the matter? Oh, what's that old fool doing here? She came to offer me her condolences. They should have been congratulations. Please don't say things like that, Elvira. It's in the worst possible taste. Uh, Madame Arcati, allow me to introduce you to my first wife, Elvira. <gasps> How do you do? What does she want, Charles? Send her away. In what part of the room is she at the moment? Uh, she's moving about rather rapidly. I'll tell you when and where she settles. She's the one who got me here in the first place, isn't she? Yes. Well, please tell her to get me away again as soon as possible. I can't stand this house another minute. Very interesting. Very interesting. I smell ectoplasm strongly. Well, really. Where is she now? Uh, here, close to me. Wonderful, wonderful. For goodness sake, tell her to go into the other room, Charles. I've got to talk to her. Uh, Madame Arcade. Just a moment. Uh, I almost have contact. I can sense the vibrations. This is magnificent. Charles, please get rid of her. Woof will be here in a minute. All right. Uh, Madame Arcati, would you think it most frightfully rude if I asked you to go into the dining room for a moment? Uh, my first wife wishes to speak to me alone. Oh, must I? It's so lovely being actually in the room with her. Well, it's only for a few moments. I, I promise you she'll be here when you come back. Very well. Hand me my bag, will you? It's on the settee. Here you are. <laughs> you darling, you little darling. How good is she really? I don't know. Do you think she really could give me back again? But my dear child... And don't call me your dear child. It's smug and supercilious. Well, no need to be rude. The whole thing's been a failure. A miserable, dreary failure. And oh, what high hopes I started out with. You can't expect much sympathy from me, you know. I'm perfectly aware that your highest hope was to murder me. Don't put it like that. It sounds so beastly. It is beastly. It's one of the beastliest ideas I've ever heard. There was a time when you'd have welcomed the chance of being with me forever and ever. Your behaviour has shocked me immeasurably, Elvira. I had no idea you were so unscrupulous. <gasps> oh, Charles. Stop crying. They're only ghost dears. They don't mean anything, really. But they're very painful. You brought all this on yourself, you know. That's right. Rub it in. Anyhow, it was only because I loved you. The silliest thing I ever did in my whole life was to love you. You were always unworthy of me. That remark comes perilously near impertinence, Elvira. I sat there on the other side, just longing for you day after day. I did, really. If only you died before you met Ruth, everything might have been all right. She's absolutely ruined you. I hadn't been in the house a day before I realized that. Your books aren't a quarter as good as they used to be either. That is entirely untrue. Ruth helped me and encouraged me with my work, which is a damn sight more than you ever did. That's probably what's wrong with it. All you ever thought of was going to parties and enjoying yourself. Why shouldn't I have fun? I died young, didn't I? You needn't have died at all if you hadn't been idiotic enough to go out on the river with Guy Henderson and get soaked to the skin. So, we're back to Guy Henderson again. You behaved we? abominably over Guy Henderson. It's no use pretending that you didn't. Guy adored me. And anyhow, he was very attractive. You've told me distinctly that he didn't attract you in the least. You'd have gone through the roof if I told you that he did. Did you have an affair with Guy Henderson? I would rather not discuss it, if you don't mind. Answer me. Did you or didn't you? Uh, of course I didn't. You let him kiss you, though, didn't you? How could I stop him? He was bigger than I was. Oh, and you swore to me? Of course I did. You were always making scenes over nothing at all. Nothing at all? You never loved me a bit, really. It was only your beastly vanity. You seriously believe that it was only vanity that upset me when you went out in the punt with Guy Henderson? It was not a punt. 
It was a law. I don't care if it was a three-masted schooner. You had no right to go. You seem to forget why I went. You seem to forget that you had spent the entire evening making sheep's eyes at that overblown Harrison with the false pearl. A woman in Cynthia Cheviot's position would hardly wear false pearls. They were practically all she was wearing. There is nothing to be gained by continuing this discussion. You always used to say that when you were thoroughly worsted. On looking back on our married years, Elvira, I see now with horrid clarity that they were nothing but a mockery. I realized that before we left Budley Salterton. Nobody but a monumental bore would have thought of having a honeymoon at Budley Salterton. What's the matter with Budley Salterton? I was an eager young bride, Charles. I wanted glamour and music and romance. All I got was potted palms, seven hours a day on a damp golf course, and three-piece orchestras playing Merry England. But pity you didn't tell me so at the time. I did, but you wouldn't listen. That's why I went out on the moors that day with Captain Bracegirdle. I was desperate. You swore to me that you'd gone over to see your aunt in Exmouth. It was the moor. With Captain Bracegirdle? With Captain Bracegirdle. I might have known it. What a fool I was. What a blind fool. Did he make love to you? Of course. Oh, Elvira. Only very discreetly. He was in the cavalry, you know. Well, all I can say is that I'm well rid of you. Unfortunately, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. You're dead and Ruth's dead. I shall sell this house, lock, stock and barrel and go away. I shall follow you. I shall go a long way away. I shall go to South America. You'll hate that. You were always such a bad traveller. That can't be helped. I shall have to follow you. You called me back. I did not call you back. Well, somebody did. And it's hardly likely to be Ruth. Nothing in the world was further from my thoughts. You were talking about me before dinner that evening. I might just as easily have been talking about Joan of Arc, but that wouldn't necessarily mean that I wanted her to come and live with me. As a matter of fact, she's rather fun. Please go away. There is nothing I should like better. I've always believed in cutting my losses. That is why I died. Oh, of all the brazen sophistry. Call that old girl in again. Set her to work. I won't tolerate this any longer. I want to go. Oh, oh, for heaven's sake, don't snivel. Oh, call her in. She's got to get me out of this. I quite agree, and the sooner the better. Uh, Madame Arcati, uh, would you please come in now? Is the little darling still here? Yes, she is. Where? Tell me where. By the piano, blowing her nose. Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Stop her fawning on me, Charles, or I shall break something. Elvira and I have discussed the whole situation, Madame Arcati, and she wishes to go home immediately. Please strain every nerve, Madame Arcati. Make every effort. Now, you said something about a formula. What is it? Well, if you insist... I most emphatically do insist. Well, I can't guarantee anything, you know. I'll do my best, but it may not work. What is the formula? <laughs> nothing more than a little verse, really. It fell into disuse after the 17th century. I shall need some pepper and salt. Uh, there's some pepper and salt in the dining room. I'll get it. We ought, of course, to have some shepherd's wort and a frog or two, but I think I can manage without. You won't be frightened, dear, will you? It's absolutely painless. Uh, will this be enough? Oh, yes, yes, I only need a little. Uh, put it on the table, please. Now then, let me see. Ah, yes. Sprinkle it, will you? Just a soupçon. There, right in the middle. This is going to be a flop. I can tell you that here and now. Now, a few snapdragons out of that vase. There's a good chap. Very well. Merlin does all this sort of thing at parties and bores us all stiff with it. Now then, the gramophone. Uh, we'd better have the same record we had before, I think. Uh, I'll get it. Don't start it yet, Mr. Condamine. Then I'll um, sit down, please. Rest your hands on the table. But don't put your fingers in the pepper. Oh, shucks. I'd nearly forgotten the salt. <laughs> one triangle, one half circle, and one little dot. There. This is a waste of time. She's a complete fake. Anything's worth trying. I'll lay you ten to one. It's a dead failure. Now, if your wife would be kind enough to lie down on the sofa... Go on, Elvira. This is sheer nonsense. Don't blame me if I get the giggles. Concentrate. Think of nothing. That's right. Quite right. Hands at the sides, legs extended. Breathe steadily. One, two, one, two, one, two. Is she comfortable? Are you comfortable, Elvira? No. She's quite comfortable. I shall join you in a moment, Mr. Condamine. Uh, I may have to go into a slight trance, but if 
I do, pay no attention. Now first the music, and away we go. Lights, ghostly spectre, ghoul or fiend, no roar be thou convened. Shepherds wilt and holy rite, banish thee into the night. What a disagreeable little verse. Be quiet, O Vera. Shush. Is there anyone there? Is there anyone there? One rap for yes, two raps for no. Is there anyone there? Aha, good stuff. Is that you, Daphne? I'm sorry to bother you, dear, but Mrs. Condamine wants to return. Now then, Daphne, did you hear what I said? Can you help us? Oh, oh hold tight, Mr. Condamine. Oh, what's the matter, Madame Arcati? Oh. Where's that blasted light switch? Madame Arcati, are you hurt? She's in one of her damn trances again, and I'm here as much as I ever was. Madame Arcati, for God's sake, wake up! Leave her alone. She's having the whale of a time. Oh. If I ever do get back, I'll strangle that wretched little Daphne. What's happened? Nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, yes, it did. I know something happened. You fell over, that's all that happened. Is she still here? Of course she is. Oh, something must have gone wrong. Make her do it properly. I'm sick of being messed about like this. Be quiet, she's doing her best. Something happened. I sensed it in my trance, I felt it. It shivered through me. Once, Once and for all, 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 all the hell does this mean? That clock's always irritated me. It strikes far too slowly. It was a wedding present from Uncle Walter. Who's Uncle Walter? Elvira's. Well, all I can say is he might have chosen something a little more decorative. Is that really where all you could say, Ruth? I'm sure it would be a great comfort to us all. You can be as rude as you like, Elvira. I don't mind a bit. As a matter of fact, I should be extremely surprised if you weren't. Why? The reply to that is really too obvious. A cottage somewhere. You called us back. I've already explained that I'm black in the face that I did nothing of the sort. Madame Arcati said you did. Madame Arcati's a muddling old fool. I could have told you that in the first place. I think you're behaving very shabbily, Charles. I don't see what I've done. We have all agreed that as Vera and I are both dead, it would be both right and proper for us to dematerialize again as soon as possible. That I admit. We've allowed ourselves to be subjected to the most humiliating hocus-pocus for hours and hours without complaining. Without complaining? We've stood up, we've lain down, we've concentrated, we've sat interminably while that tiresome old woman recited extremely unflattering verses at us. We've endured five seances and watched her fling herself in and out of trances until she finally passed out of the sofa and at the end of it all, we're exactly where we were at the beginning. Well, it's not my fault. Be that as it may, the least you could do is to admit failure gracefully and try to make the best of it. Your manners are boorish to a degree. I am just as exhausted as you are. I've had to do all the damn table tapping, remember? Well, she can't get us back, she can't, and that's that. We shall have to think of something else. She must get you back. Anything else is unthinkable. There's gratitude for you. Gratitude? Yes, for all the years we've both devoted to you. You ought to be ashamed. What about all the years I've devoted to you? You ought to be ashamed. Nonsense. We've waited on you hand and foot, haven't we, Ruth? Certainly. You're exceedingly selfish and always were. In that case, I fail to see why you were both so anxious to get back to me. You called us back and you've done nothing but try to get rid of us ever since we came, hasn't he, Elvira? He certainly has. And now, owing to your idiotic inefficiency, we find ourselves in the most mortifying position when neither fish, flesh, nor fowl, nor whatever it is. Good red herring. It can't be. Well, why don't you do something about it? Why don't you go back on your own? We can't. You know perfectly well we can't. The impetus has to come from here. Perhaps darling Charles doesn't want us to go quite enough. I certainly do. Well, you must have a very weak will, then. I always suspected it, and it's no use arguing anymore. Wake up, Madame Arcati. Please wake up, Madame Arcati. Who's shake her? Might upset her. I don't care if it kills her. Please wake up, Madame Arcati. Oh. 
What time is it? Five past five. It will be daylight soon. Uh, what time did I go off? Over an hour ago. Are they still here? Yes. Oh, how disappointing. Have you any suggestions? <laughs> we mustn't give up hope. Chin up. Never give in. Away with melancholy. Oh, this schoolgirl jargon's driving me mad. What do you say we have another seance and really put our shoulders to the wheel? Make it a real rouser. Madam Arcati, before you go off into any further trances, I really think we ought to discuss the situation a little. Good. An excellent idea. Far away. And while we're doing it, I shall have another of those delicious sandwiches. <laughs> mm, I'm as hungry as a hunter. Uh, well, now, my wives and I have been talking it over, and they are both absolutely convinced that I somehow or other called them back. Oh, very natural. I am equally convinced that I did not. Love is a strong psychic force, Mr. Conway. I did not call them back, either consciously or subconsciously. That Mr. Conway... That is my final word. Neither the... of them could have appeared unless there'd been somebody, a psychic subject in the house, who wished for. Well, it wasn't me. Perhaps it was Dr. Bradman. I never knew he cared. Are you sure? Are you really sure? Absolutely positive. Great Scott. I believe I've been barking up the wrong tree. How do you mean? The Sudbury case. I don't understand. Well, there's no reason why you should. It was before your day. It was the case that made me famous, Mr. Condamine. What did you do? I dematerialized old Lady Sudbury after she'd been firmly entrenched in the private chapel for over 17 years. How? Can you remember? How? Chance. A fluke. I happened on it by the merest coincidence. What fluke? What was it? Wait. All in good time. Now, let me see. Who was in the house during our first seance? Uh, only the Bradmans, Ruth and me and yourself. Ah, yes, sir, to be sure. But, but the Bradmans weren't here last night, were they? No. Quickly, my crystal. Yeah? Ah, drat the thing. It's cloudy again. Wow. <gasps> That's better. It's there again. It's there again. I'm beginning to understand. I wish I was. What's there again? A bandage. A white bandage. Hold on to a white bandage. I haven't got a white bandage. <laughs> She's too good, you know. She ought to be in a circus. Be you in nook or cranny, answer me. Be you in still room or closet, answer me. Be you behind the panel above the stairs, beneath the eaves, waking or sleeping, answer me. That ought to do it, or I'm a Dutchman. Do what? Shh, sure, wait. Uh, would you like the gramophone on or the lights out or anything? No, no, no. It's near. It's very near. If it's a ghost, I shall scream. I hope it's nobody we know. I shall feel so silly. Uh, did you ring, sir? No, Edith. The bandage. The bandage. I I'm sorry, sir. I could have sworn I heard the bell or somebody calling. I was asleep. I, I don't rightly know which it was. Come here, child. Oh. Uh, go on. Go to Madame Arcati. It's quite all right. Whom do you see in this room, child? Oh, dear. Answer, please. Uh, you, madam. Go on. Uh, the master. Anyone else? Oh, no, madam. Come, child. Don't beat about the bush. Look again. Do concentrate out there and keep still. I can't. Do you see anyone else now? Oh, no, madam. She's lying. Oh, madam. They always do. They? Where are they now? By the fireplace. Oh, she can see them. Do you mean she can see them? Probably not very clearly, but oh. enough. <laughs> let me go. I haven't done nothing nor seen nobody. Oh, let me go back to bed. Give her a sandwich. I don't want a sandwich. I want to get back to bed. Nonsense. A big, healthy girl like you saying no to a delicious <laughs> sandwich? Never heard of such a thing. Sit down. Oh, please, sir. Please do as Madame Arcati says, Edith. It's all right. Nobody said you had. If she's been the cause of all this unpleasantness. I'll give her a week's notice tomorrow. You may not be here tomorrow. Look at me, Edith. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Oh, dear. What's the matter with her? Is she balmy? Here, Edith. This is my finger. Look. Have you ever seen such a long, long, long finger? Look, now it's on the right. 
Now it's on my left. Backwards and forwards it goes. See? Very quietly. Backwards and forwards. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. The mouse ran up the clock. Be quiet or you ruin everything. Ah. So far, so good. She's off all right. Off? She's a natural, just the same as the Sudbury case. It really is the most amusing coincidence. Now then, uh, would you ask your wives to stand close together, please? Elvira, Ruth. I resent being ordered about like this. I don't like this at all. I don't like any of it. I feel peculiar. I'm afraid I must insist. It will serve you right if we flatly refuse to do anything at all. Are you sorry for having been so mischievous, Edith? Oh, yes, madam. You know what you have to do now, don't you, Edith? Oh, yes, madam. I believe it's going to work, whatever it is. Oh, Charles. <laughs> this is goodbye, Charles. Tell her to stop for a minute. There's something I want to say before I go. You should have thought of that before. It's too late now. Of all the me, I'm Charles. Wait, listen a moment. The lights! I'll be loving you always. I saw Captain Bracegirdle again, Charles. Several times. I went to a nightclub with her twice when you were in Nottingham. And I must you I will Don't think you're getting rid of us quite so easily, my dear. You may not be able to see us, but we shall be here all right. I consider that you have behaved atrociously over the whole miserable business, and I shall like to... No, for just an hour. No, for just a day. No, for just... Splendid! Hurrah! We've done it. Quite enough singing for the moment, Edith. Uh, shall I put on the lights? No, I will. They've gone. They've really gone. Yes. I think we've really pulled it off this time. Uh, you'd better wake her up, hadn't you? She might bring them back again. Wake up, child. Good heavens, where am I? It's all right, Edith. You can go back to bed now. But I, I was in bed. How did I get down here? I rang, Edith. I rang the bell and you answered it. Uh, didn't I, Madame Arcati? Oh, did I drop off? What oh, do you think? It's my concussion again. Oh, dear. Off you go, Edith, and thank you very much. Uh, here's a pound for all you've done. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, sir. Whatever for? Oh, sir. What on earth did you mean by that? Phew. Golly, what a night. I'm ready to drop in my tracks. Uh, would you like to stay here? There's the spare room, you know. No, thank you. Each to his own nest. I'll pedal home in a jiffy. It's only seven miles. I'm deeply grateful to you, Madame Arcade. I, I don't know what arrangements you generally make, but I trust you will send in your account in due course. Good heavens, Mr. Condamine. It was a pleasure. I wouldn't dream of such a thing. Oh, uh, perhaps you'd give me the pleasure of lunching with me one day soon. When you come back, I should be delighted. Come back? Take my advice, Mr. Condamine, and go away immediately. But, Madame Arcati, you don't mean... There are that... more things in heaven and earth, Mr. Condamine. Just go. Pack your traps and go as soon as possible. Do you mean that they may still be here? Quien sabe, as the Spanish say. I wonder. I wonder. I'll follow your advice, Madame Arcati. Thank you again. Well, goodbye, Mr. Condamine. It's been fascinating from first to last. Fascinating. Don't trouble to see me out. I can find my way. Ruth? Elvira? Are you there? I just want to tell you that I'm going away, so there's no point in hanging about any longer. I'm going a long way away, somewhere where I don't believe you will be able to follow me. In spite of what Elvira said, I don't think spirits can travel over water. Is that quite clear, my darlings? Goodbye for the moment. I expect we are bound to meet again one day. 
But until we do, I'm going to enjoy myself as I've never enjoyed myself before. You can break up the house as much as you like. I'm leaving it anyhow. Goodbye again. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> <laughs>